we draw insights on how to journey by faith into the fulfillment of God's promises from the life of Abraham. All right, so let's rise up to feet this morning, please. We're going to make our declaration together. Uh, if you brought your Bible, I want you to hold it high up in the air. Say this out loud, bold, and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word. And I live by his word. I advance boldly to take new ground, to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you please stand around to those uh, next to you. Shake hands with them. Smile. Give them your name. And uh, then you may be seated, please. Thank you. Right now, we are journeying on a study through faith. And uh, this whole subject of faith is very important for all of us as believers. Uh, we need to know how to walk by faith, how to live by faith, how to exercise and use our faith in God, how to put our faith to work. Uh, this is very important for all of us to know that understand it, and to live by it. You know, in life, all of us have various challenges, various situations that we face. It could be we need healing, we need deliverance. Maybe there are financial situations that need to be addressed. Sometimes we face obstacles and mountains. Uh, sometimes we uh, go through various challenges in life. Uh, whatever, every area of life has to be addressed with our faith in God and out of faith in God. This is very important. You know, and it is not right for us as believers to take a posture where we just sit down and say, God, whatever, I want, whatever has to happen, let it happen. That is not the kind of a posture that God has called us to take. The posture you and I have to take is one that is aggressive. Because Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So there is a sense of aggressiveness, a pushing in that you and I have to make in order to enjoy and experience the things of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has been made available to us, but you and I must advance. We and I must press in because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Amen? There's that sense of violence and, 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 and that one expression of being violent is you and I ex exercising our faith in God. Saying, God, you have spoken this. You have said this. Now here I am. I want to walk in it. I want to experience it. We can't sit around and just wait for things to happen to us. We've got to go get it, so to speak. Are you with me? So this whole issue of faith. This whole area aspect of learning to walk by faith is important for all of us. Uh, next Sunday we'll talk about this aspect of faith in the life of the believer. And, and, and we look at the importance of, of faith in our lives. Today, as, we've been, uh, cont as we're continuing this series on faith, uh, last two Sundays we talked about uh, Jesus, what Jesus did and taught concerning faith. Today we're going to look at faith in the Old Testament. Uh, how did men and women in the Old Testament walk by faith? We want to learn a few lessons, insights from that. Now, in the Old Testament, the words believe or believed 
of faith is not used very often. So you don't find it. As you read through the Old Testament, you don't find that word very often. There are a few instances, but not too, much, too many. But nevertheless, when you come to Hebrews chapter 11, the, this 11th chapter in the book of Hebrews points back to the Old Testament and says, Hey, all these people starting from Abel, all these people did great things by faith. And so it just enumerates or lists for us the names of all these different people from the Old Testament. By faith, so-and-so did this. By faith, he did this. By faith, she did this. And so it enumerates several people in the Old Testament. And these men and women in their time, in their day, because of their faith in God, saw unusual things happen. They saw the impossible take place. Uh, they saw God's glory displayed through their lives because of their faith in God in their day and time. Uh, because of their faith in God, they also were able to go through hardships, difficulties. They endured challenges, endured sufferings, and they were able to press past all of that. And so Hebrews chapter 11 bears this out. And I'm not going to read this entire chapter, but I just want to highlight two things from this chapter for us this morning. We've seen some other things from this chapter. We saw Hebrews 11, 1, uh, the definition of faith, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Uh, we also saw Hebrews 11, 6, that without faith it's impossible to please God. Uh, but I want to bring our attention to two important things. First of, uh, in this chapter, first thing is this, that walking in faith gives us a good testimony before God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. And it repeats there in verse 39. And all these, after he gives the list of all the names of these people, and some though many whose names are not mentioned, he says, All these having obtained a good testimony through faith, they did not receive the promise. We'll come back to the did not receive the promise part a little later. But here's the thing I want us to understand. That if you and I want to have a good testimony before God, a good report in the eyes of God. Some translations uh, render this, they were commended by God. They received God's approval on their lives. Or they received a good rating before God. If you and I want to receive a good testimony before God, it is going to happen because you and I walk by faith. It says, through faith, the elders obtained a good report. And so also it is with you and me today. If you and I want to have a good report with God, we have to be people who walk by faith. Amen? A good report. We walk by faith. Now, I just want to make this comment. See, testimony is what God says about us. Many times when we talk about testimony, we talk about what people are saying about us. But first and foremost, your testimony is what God says about you. Now obviously if God says good things about you, it's very likely a few, good, few people are also going to say good things about you. See, your testimony before God is more important than your opinion, what, than other people's opinion about you. Amen? Your testimony before God is more important than people's opinion about you. Because at the end of the day, people's opinion about you will not really count when it's put in the balance against what God has to say about you, about me. Amen? So our focus must be, what does God say about me? I want to have a good testimony before God. Now, it should be a natural outcome that people also recognize that and, and say good things about you. But that's immaterial as long as you have a good testimony before God. And one of the keys to have a good testimony for God is that you and I must walk in faith. By faith, we obtain a good testimony before God. So you and I need to be people of faith. The second thing I want to bring our attention to in Hebrews chapter 11 is this. Hebrews 11 highlights something very important. While it tells us about the great things they accomplished in their lifetime, these heroes of faith, they saw amazing things. They saw the sea part. They saw the walls come down. They possessed their land of inheritance and so on. So they saw great things happen in their day and in their time. Yet, these were people 
who lived by faith in the promises of God for the future. And because they lived in such a manner, the Bible says, God was not ashamed to call them to be known as their gods. So they lived in their day and time. They walked by faith for the present. So they saw God do things in their day and time. They saw God things do amazing things. But there was an additional aspect to their faith. They also lived by faith in the promises of God for the future. That had a bearing on how they lived in the present. And because of that, God was not ashamed to be called their God. Look at these verses with me in Hebrews chapter 11. And then we will talk about how it applies to us today. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10. For it says there, For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. I skip to verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. But having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have had, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better. That is, what are the next three words? A heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. A prepared a city for them. So what's it saying? They went about their everyday life. They believed God for the present, for the here and the now. But they also had faith in God for something in the future. For an eternal city, a heavenly city, a, a, a heavenly country, a, a city whose builder and maker is God. And the Bible says now they died without seeing that element of the promises fulfilled. They didn't see that fulfilled. They died without seeing that fulfilled. But yet, because they lived in such a way, God is not ashamed to be called their God. And in their everyday life, the Bible says that in verse 13, they saw that city. They, they were convinced of that city. They embraced that future and they confessed about that. They saw, they were convinced, they embraced and they confessed. What? About an eternity that they believe God would have for them. And so that came into their now. So what does that mean to you and me? One important element of walking by faith is that not only do we walk in the uh, faith and the promises of God for the here and now, that's important, we'll talk about it. But we also live by faith in an eternal future that God has for us. And that faith in that eternal future brings that into our equation. So when you and I are making decisions, it's not just about how this will affect me now. But it, we add another important element to our equation. How does this count for eternity? Because we have faith in the promises of God for eternity. Are you with me? So with your money, oh, people can't understand. Why do you give 10% to church every month? I mean, imagine how much money you can make if you were to invest that in mutual funds. But why do you give it to church? People can't understand why you give so much time in church. I mean, you go and sit for two hours on Sunday morning. You could be enjoying doing something else. And then in addition to that, you give so much of your time doing other things for the work of God. Why? Why do you invest? Why do you do this? Because you have eternity in your equation. They don't. And when you do that, when you live like that, God is saying, I am not ashamed to be called your God. Amen. Now that was how they lived. These Old Testament heroes. 
They believed in this promise. They saw it from afar. They were convinced about it. They embraced it in their everyday life. They talked about it. And God said, even though they died without seeing that eternity, that city whose builder and maker is God, that country that's a heavenly country, even though they died without it, I am not ashamed to be called their God because I indeed have it ready for them. They will get it. Amen. So important part about walking by faith in God. That this faith in God that you have also includes faith in a future. That, that in an eternity that you know you will have with God. And that eternity begins to affect how you live in the here and now. And just moving along a few verses in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39. It says, and these all these... Having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. So they didn't see this. They didn't see this heavenly city. They didn't see this heavenly country that they were living for. They didn't see it. But they still obtained a good report because they journeyed through their earthly life by faith in God. And then verse 40, Hebrews 11 says, God having provided something better for us. That they should not be made perfect apart from us. So God kept something better for you and me. You know, you and I have a much better covenant with God. You and I have a much, a much better promises with God. God having kept something better for us. We live on the other side of the cross. Where the work of the cross is finished. That's why you and I can say, I am redeemed. I am washed. I am delivered. I am healed. They couldn't say that. Amen? So God has kept these better things for us. But yet in his plan, he said one thing. They without us will not be complete. Or let's put it this way. They will be completed together with us. That means they, the Old Testament men and women of faith, together with us will enjoy this heavenly city, this heavenly kingdom, this eternal future that God has prepared both for them and for us. Amen? So it means that you and I also live that way, the way they lived. They lived in the present with an eye on eternity. And God said, if you live like that, I'm proud of you. I'm not ashamed to be called your God. Amen. So what are you going through? And sometimes I'm a present, I hear in the now, seems so big. But why don't you just put eternity into the equation and take a look at it one more time? Amen. Look at your life with eternity in the equation. Look at what you're going through with eternity there. Things will take on a new meaning. Money, time, energy, efforts will suddenly take on a new new definition of, of their value when you start looking at it from eternity and how you handle these things will change and God says you live like that amen now so for now we walk the same as they walk by faith in the promises of things yet to come and what we're going to do is look at two Old Testament examples there are many examples that we could look at uh, from the Old Testament and draw lessons of, of faith. But I want us to look at two, just two examples this morning and draw lessons of walking by faith in God. The first one is about the people of Israel inheriting the promised land or the land of promise. You see, the, the New Testament in several places in Romans 15 and 1 Corinthians 10 and, and also in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3, 4 and 11 and so on. Uh, points to the journey the people of Israel made and says all these things happen to them as examples for us. So we can look at their journey and draw lessons for us in the New Testament. So we know what happened. God brought them out of the land of Egypt. He said, look, I'm taking you to a land that I'm going to give to you as an inheritance. 
It is a beautiful land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's your land. It's the land I reserved for you. It's your inheritance. I'm giving it to you. But uh, as you go there, you've got to fight some battles. But I'm assuring you that you, I will help you conquer cities and nations who are far greater than you. He told them that. So here they are. They come to the edge of the promised land. They're about to, you know, they're about ready to get into the land. God just sent 12 spies to them, see the land, come back and bring the report. You know this. Ten of them came back and said, you know, the land is exactly the way God said it. Look at the fruit of the land. It's amazing. But one problem, there are giants in the land. We can't take it. We are like grasshoppers in their eyes. Now Joshua and Caleb came back. They saw the same thing. They said the same report. And they said there are giants in the land. But God is with us. Therefore, the giants are bred for us. Ready to be consumed. Let's go. But people believed the majority report. And so for the next approximately 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. Basically, what they did was they're going around in a big circle. They went in a circle, round and round, round and round, round and round, the same mountain range. 70 kilometers north to south, 30 kilometers east to west, and round and round they went. The scenery was changing, but their location didn't. Things looked different every day, but they were really not making any progress. Until God said, enough is enough. He had to get rid of the unbelievers. And he said, only people of faith are going to enter in the land of promise. Let's look at two verses here. So they let what they saw appear bigger than the promise of God. They didn't lay hold of the promise of God through faith. Hebrews 3 and verse 19 says, so we see that they could not enter in because of Let's say that together again. They could not enter in because of unbelief. Hebrews 4 and verse 6 says, Therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of listen. Two things kept them out of a land that God said, I'll give you. Two things. Unbelief and listen. Unbelief and disobedience. Unbelief and disobedience. Kept them out of a land that God said, I will give you. Or let's put it this way. If you want to go into the land that God says he'll give you, you need to have faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. To go in and possess the land that God's given you. Now remember, that is an example for us. God has an inheritance that he has for every one of us, his children. God has blessings. God has provision. God has said you're more than a conqueror. God said you will overcome. God said you will conquer sin. God said you will live life as a victor over sin. God has things for you. He has spoken in his written word. He has things he has spoken to you personally by his Holy Spirit. These are all promises that describe your land of promise. But God is not telling you what is unreal. He's saying this is for you. But there are some giants you've got to fight. But if you have faith and obedience, you will inherit your land of promise. You will receive your promises. Are you with me? We walk by faith and obedience to God. And that's what it takes for us to possess our inheritance, to possess the promises that God has for us. Faith and obedience. So, the message for us is that we must walk in faith and obedience to possess our inheritance. And belief and disobedience will keep us out of what God really has for us. The next example we want to look at is that of Abraham, the father of faith. In Romans chapter 4, verse 11, he's called the father of all who believe. In verse 12, the Bible says, we have to walk 
in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham. So walk in his steps. It means if he did that, I'll do it. If he did that, I'll do it. If he did that, I'll also do it. Walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. So what are the steps of, Ab of, of Abraham? Now we know the story of Abraham, how God called him out and said, I will give you a land of promise. I'll give you descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, the sand of the sea. So we know that story. But what were the steps of Abraham? Let's go to Romans chapter 4, verses 17 to 20, 21. It's a passage we have referred many times. We'll continue reading it as long as we are on earth. So you'll never cease preaching uh, from Romans 7, Romans 4, 17 to 21. Let's read it again. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope in hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So this is... Abraham's report card that highlights his steps of faith. But I want to point out something here. Abraham did not have a perfect life. He made mistakes. He lied about his wife two times. Some wives, I mean, we can't handle it. We can't handle it. But Abraham lied about his wife. He went through times where he tried to solve God's problem. He said, God, I'm not sure if, you know, maybe when you said somebody born in my house, maybe you meant somebody else, any one of my, you know, the, the, uh, children born to any one of my servants. And he said, maybe I need to help God. And he birthed Ishmael. So Abraham didn't have a perfect life. He had, he made mistakes. But look at his report card. No mention of his mistakes. God is describing Abraham in Romans 4, 17 to 21. The Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul. Giving him full marks for everything. No mention of any of his mistakes. Why? Because by faith you obtain a good report. Amen. So when we walk by faith... God in his mercy, God in his grace erases the mistakes, highlights your works of faith. That's what God does. And that's what walking by faith obtains from God. A good testimony because you are walking by faith. Uh, by faith you obtain a good testimony. That's Abraham's testimony. No mention of all his errors. Now when you look at that passage, and let's try to uh, list out the steps of Abraham's faith. Number one, Abraham believed God. Now remember, we have to imitate his faith. You and I believe God. So for Abraham, it meant that he saw God as the one who gives life to the dead. That he had to see God as the one who brings things which do not exist into existence. And that's how he believed God. For you, in the situation you're in, maybe you need to believe God as Jehovah Rapha. Maybe you need to believe God as Jehovah Jireh. Maybe you need to believe God as Jehovah Nissi, the one who will give you the victory. Whatever it is, in your situation, you believe God. That he is who he said he is. That with God, nothing is impossible. That God is the God of all flesh. He is the God who made the heavens and the earth. And there is nothing that God cannot do. First step, believe God. Recognize the greatness of God in your circumstance, in your situation. 
recognize the giver of the promise, who he is, how great he is. Abraham believed God. And then what did he do? Verse two, uh, next, number two. Against all hope, in hope, he still believed. Romans 4, verse 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope he believed. Against all hope he believed. That means when there was no logical reason to have hope, he still had hope. And that hope ignited his faith. Now let's talk ho about hope a little bit. Hope is very important. Because it is hope that is the pace setter for faith. Hope is the forerunner. It is hope that pulls out faith from you. So it's very important to have hope. Now what is hope? That is when you are in a given situation that everything seems dry and deserted by hope. You are able to see and envision a future where everything is fine and flourishing. That's hope. If you're in a situation where uh, things are financially tough, difficult, you're in debt, uh, and things are very difficult, but you, in the, your mind's eye, you're able to envision a future where all your debts are clear, and you are blessed so much so that you are now a blessing to other people, that picture you have is your hope. Are you with me? And we must have that. We must have hope. Now Abraham went through times in his life where he became hopeless. I read about it in Genesis 15. He wakes up. I mean, he's, one night he's probably in his tent all alone. And he's talking to God. Saying, God. Do you know how much time has gone since the time you gave me the promise? It's embarrassing, God. And why are you taking so long? And God, maybe I can help you. Maybe you meant somebody was born in my house and not the one born through Sarah. So he's having this conversation with God out of a state of hopelessness, out of a state of totally being discouraged. And what God tells Abraham, Abraham, come out of your tent. So in that dark Middle Eastern sky, Abraham crawls out of his tent and God says, look up. Look up. And he sees all the stars. And God says, Abraham, I want to make it very clear. One born through you and Sarah. Is that one I'm talking about. And as numerous as the stars in the sky. That's how numerous your descendants will be. Go back to sleep. <laughs> so God painted a picture of hope for Abraham. He had to envision again that promise of God. And God painted that picture. So when all hope seems lost, I want to encourage you. Go back to the promise of God. Go back to the word of God and dream again. Paint afresh the picture of your future as described by the word of God. Don't let your present situation describe your future. Let the promise of God paint the picture of your future. Amen. That's what God did for Abraham. Abraham. This is what I want you to do. And so against all hope, he still believed. Number three, he was not weak in faith and did not look at the natural. So it says there in Romans 4 verse 19, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body or the body of Sarah or Sarah's womb. He didn't consider. So here's a very important thing. We are not denying the circumstances, right? We're not denying it. It's there. You're, face. You're, you're facing a mountain. You're facing a giant. You're facing a closed door. Uh, those circumstances are real. You're not denying it. But you're making a choice not to focus on your circumstances, but to focus on the promise of God, on God and his promises. So that's what Abraham did.
When you're feeling tired of standing in faith, refresh your vision based on the promise of God. Don't focus on your circumstances. So to keep your faith strong, what must we do? Focus on God and his promises. And not on the circumstances. To keep your faith strong. Focus on God and his promises. Not on the circumstances. See, Abraham protected himself. He didn't let his faith weaken by just looking at the circumstance. He didn't wake up every morning and say, Sarah, you're gone, I'm gone, we're gone. <laughs> no, he didn't talk like that. He wasn't focusing on the situation. He did not consider his own body, neither the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No, because he knew that would weaken his faith. But what did he do to keep his faith strong? Focus on God and his promise. Not on the circumstances. What else did Abraham do? Number four. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. We said this last Sunday. We'll remind us again. You know, worry, fear, and doubt will come knocking. They come knocking. They want to rob you of your faith. Unbelief will come knocking in various forms. But you answer by faith. Let faith answer the door. Abraham didn't stagger the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't let unbelief come in because he knew if unbelief came and he would stumble at the promise of God. He said, no, I'm not giving place to unbelief. I'm not going to let unbelief affect my faith. You know, and all kinds of thoughts can come in. Oh, poor you. You have such a big giant. That person has such a small giant. Your giant is so big. All these things keep coming. Thoughts keep coming. Worry, fear, doubt, unbelief come knocking at your door. But you make a choice that you will not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But you will stay strong in faith. Amen. You speak your faith. When those doubts come, speak your faith. When worry comes, speak your faith. When fear comes, speak your faith. Say what God has said. Let faith answer. So Abraham did not waver at the promise of God to unbelief. But what did he do? Number five. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So how did his faith become stronger? Here's an important secret, an important key to strengthening your faith. He gave glory to God. That means he gave praise. He gave thanks. He gave honor. He gave worship to God. And as he did that, his faith was strengthened. So here's the key. Praise God. Thank God. Worship him, honor him, even before you see the answer. Because you're operating out of faith. You see in the natural, when somebody gives you a gift, your normal response is, thank you. Because you received it. Same thing in faith. Because in faith you have received that promise God has given you, you now praise and thank him. You give glory to And that strengthens your faith. Makes you stronger. So in the natural, when all things are going bad, you still praise Him. You still thank Him. You still worship Him. You still honor Him. because, And you do it by faith. And that will strengthen your faith. It says He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So do it. Oh, this old time, we used to sing this song. When you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams. When your hopes have been cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested schemes. What are the next words? Anybody remembers that, Jacob? <laughs> I said, 
Oh, yeah, and, okay, forget it. But it, t- it talks about how you praise God in the middle of everything hopeless around you. Yeah. Praise the Lord is what the song says. Praise Him. Amen. The last thing we see here about Abraham was this. He was fully convinced that what God had promised, he will also perform. So he reached this place of full conviction. So faith rests in God's ability to fulfill his word. When you reach that place, having done all to stand, you just stand fully convinced. That's it. You believe God. You trusted God. You're now in a place where you're fully convinced. God will do what he has promised to stand in that posture. I am fully convinced. Stand. Just rest in God's ability to fulfill his words. God, I know you'll do it. I'm resting here. Amen. So these were the steps of the faith of Abraham. I want to just mention two more things about Abraham's journey of faith and we will close. So we're not done yet. We have two more stops to go. (laughs) In Abraham's journey of faith, and this is in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 12 and 17 to 19. I'm not going to read that, but I will summarize it for us. In Hebrews 11... The writer of Hebrews says, you know, Abraham not only came into this land of promise by faith, not only did Sarah conceive by faith, not only did Abraham, a man who was as good as dead, give rise to a nation that was as innumerable as the stars in the sky and sand of the seashore by faith, not only do that by faith, but there's something more about Abraham. It says by faith, when Abraham was tested, he was willing to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice. Now think about that. If you and I are believing God for something, and finally, after 25 years, you get the promise, and now God says, can you give it back? You're like, God, wait a minute. You took 25 years to get it to me, and now you want it back? You and I may have said that. What was Abraham's response? The Bible says, by faith. That means his journey of faith didn't stop with just receiving the promise. He said, God, my faith in you is so strong that if you want me to kill Isaac, I'll do it. But I know you've got to raise that boy back to life because you have to keep your words. You want me to kill him, I'll kill him. But I just know, and I know, and I know that you will raise that very boy. You will not give me Isaac Jr. You will not give me Isaac the second. No, you will give me this Isaac. You will have to raise him up back. And so Hebrews 11 highlights that. And here's the point. The end result of each fulfilled promise is a deeper relationship with the God who made the promise. And a greater understanding of who he is, the one in whom we believe. It was on Mount Moriah where Abraham laid Isaac on the altar and he was about to kill him. God said, don't. And God said, Abraham, I want to reveal something more about myself to you. My name is Jehovah Jireh. Abraham received a revelation of God that he had not seen before. So the end result of every fulfilled promise is not just for you to enjoy the promise, but it's for you to come into a place of a deeper relationship with God. I know who my God is because I've journeyed with Him till this point, and my journey with Him doesn't end. Here that I've received the promise, I am going into a place of deeper understanding of who God is. 
Or you can put it this way. The joy of faith is not just a fulfilled promise, but a greater intimacy with the one who gave the promise. Amen. The joy of this journey of faith is not just that your body gets healed or that your debts get cleared or the mountains get moved or the giants get slain. But the joy of this journey of faith is that you and I come into a place of deeper intimacy with our God. That I know him now much more than I knew him before I began this journey of faith. That's the point. And the joy of knowing him is far greater than the joy of the fulfilled promise. Because he is the better reward. Amen. So that was Abraham's journey of faith. It was not just about him receiving Isaac. But it was him coming to the place where God said, he is my friend. And Abraham was called the friend of God. Why are you walking by faith? Just to get your needs met? Just to get your problems solved? Just to get your mountains moved? I mean, all that is good. But through this journey, you want to be known as a friend of God. Amen? Amen? That's the purpose of this journey. One last thing about Abraham's journey of faith. We go to James chapter 2. And now James is looking back at Abraham's journey. And he brings this out for us in James chapter 2. And I'll just mention some verses here. James 2 20, he says, Do you not know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect. And I jump down to verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So here's the thing. Another lesson from Abraham's journey of faith. Faith without works is dead. Meaning it cannot produce. The actions that correspond to faith are necessary in order to get your faith to produce. So if you're believing God to bless you in your work, you need to go to work. Amen? It's not enough to sit at home and say, I believe God will bless me in my work. That is good. But faith without corresponding actions. Cannot produce. In fact, it says there that faith, working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect. By works, faith became mature. It came to the place where it could conceive, it could bear fruits. So, when you and I talk about having faith in God, we must have actions in line with our faith. And when we act in line with this word, faith in the word will produce and bear results. So act your faith. To put your faith to work. To make your faith work. To make your faith produce results. We must act in line. Do in line with your faith. Actions. Amen. So some lessons. From... Old Testament, from the Old Testament, about walking by faith. Follow the steps of Abraham's faith. He received the promise of God. But the ultimate joy of our journey of faith is a deeper relationship with our God. Amen. I want us to take a few moments to pray or call our worship team up, please. And I want to pray for a few things before we close this morning.
First of all, if there are people here, so first I want to pray, just give an invitation for salvation for people who may want to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. We will do that. And then after that, I want to just take some time to pray for God to meet the needs of people right here in this place, in this auditorium. If you're here this morning and you've come in with a need in your life, we're going to pray over you so that God will meet your needs. There's a healing, there's a work that you want God to do in your life. We're going to believe God together to do those miracles. So first, I want to pray for those who would like to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So the Bible tells us, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. We have all sinned. We've all done wrong things before God. And what we deserve is death, which is eternal separation from God in hell. But the Bible says the gift of God, the free gift of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He offers that to us freely. And by faith we receive, each one of us, by believing in His Son, we receive. So if you're here this morning... You may have visited, visited here several times before, but if you've never made a personal decision to receive Jesus Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer so that you can receive Him this morning. I want, we will celebrate with you. If you've never done this before in your life, if you've never received Jesus Christ into your life to forgive you your sins, could you please pray this prayer with me if you'd like to? Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me to live for you the rest of my life. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried and that you rose up again. I believe you're alive today. I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody here this morning, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. If you don't mind, just raise your hand up where you are. We'll have our greeters. God bless you. Anybody else? We'll have our greeters come to you. Anybody else up on the balcony? Just raise your hand where you are. God bless you. God bless you. Our greeters will come to you, give you a bag. Anybody else? Just raise your hand up right there. We have a, a gift that we want to give you. Uh, I see one hand way up there at the back. Uh, anybody else up on the balcony? Just raise your hand. Our greeters are up there waiting to give this back to you. Along with this bag, you'll receive a contact information card. Please write your name and your number on that card and give it back to our greeters. They'll come and come back to you in a few minutes. I'll receive that card from you. You'll help us be in touch with you in the weeks to come. We'll guide, guide you how to use the resources in that bag. God bless you. You've made the most important decision in your life this morning. And we want to help you in your journey of faith. God bless you. And we're going to rise up to our feet. We're going to take a few moments just to worship Jesus. And then we're going to pray, just a general prayer for God to meet our needs. If you need healing this morning, I want you to be expectant that the Lord will heal you, that the Lord will touch you, God will deliver you. If you need God's intervention in some area of your life, I want you to stay expectant that God will intervene in your life situation as we take a few moments to pray. Let's do that, please. You deserve the glory and the honor Cause Lord we lift our hands in worship As we lift your holy name You deserve
in a few moments of prayer this morning. If you've come in this morning with sickness and disease in your body, illness in your body, I want you to lay your hand on your own body. You lay your own hands on your body. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Believe God to heal. Believe God to break sickness off, disease off. If you're here with some other situation in life, a financial problem, situations at work in your family, your marriage your home I want you to believe God with me I'm just going to pray a simple prayer but you believe God just put your hand on your body just say this with me if you're sick, you're hurting and you need God to heal your body or mind just say this with me right where you are Lord Jesus I receive you as my healer I declare that by your stripes, I've been healed. My body has been healed. Sickness and disease, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I receive my healing by faith. I declare my body healed, made whole right now by faith in Jesus name now take a moment to speak very specifically to your condition commanding it to leave if you've got diabetic can diabetes got arthritis whatever your condition is some pain some disorder you command that by name to leave your body and father I stand right now with faith with every person here believing you for healing I announce to them, you are their Jehovah Rapha. God, you are our healer. You are our deliverer. In the name of Jesus, Satan, I take authority over you. I take authority over your works. I take authority over your sorts of sickness and disease and torment and oppression. And in the name of Jesus, I destroy it. I command it to leave the people now under the sound of my voice. 
in the name of Jesus, be healed. Receive your healing. Be made whole now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you, God. Now, I'm just going to pray for other needs. But if you receive the healing right now that you can tell of, then you want to give a testimony, just come up forward. We'll take it. I'm just going to go ahead and pray for other needs. But if you receive the healing right now, something happened to you that is tangible, you can verify it clearly. All right? We don't want to, you know, if you need to go home, take time, go to the doctor and verify, that's fine. But if there's something you can tell clearly, then just come forward. We'll take your testimony. But let me just pray for other needs and then we will close. Father, we just pray for other needs and situations in this place. Father, I release your anointing into their life situations. Your word says that the anointing breaks the yoke. That the anointing removes the burdens of God. So right now, I release your anointing. That the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit come into those life situations. Let mountains be moved, let obstacles be moved, let debts be cleared, let provision come in, let closed doors open, let multiplication and increase come, let fruitfulness come by the power of God's Holy Spirit on your life. I just want you to pray and say, Lord Jesus, I receive my miracle. I receive my miracle. I receive it. So, Father, we give you thanks for your work and for the testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, bless you. Now, if you've received, when God does something to you, share the testimony. Send us an email so we can share it with the congregation. We will not disclose your name or other details. But we just want to rejoice with you. Share what God has done for you. God bless you. Have a good Sunday afternoon and a great week ahead. Amen. Keep journeying by faith. Go from faith to faith. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a good afternoon. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.